So here we have the ultimate passenger, the rider. This is all about the rider here. Guide to Lyft, Uber, and ride sharing. You know, if you if you want to download this app as a rider or a passenger, right? Thanks to Christopher Elliott here from Elliott.org who put this together. Now for a driver, my guess is 99% of you know 99% of this stuff, right? It's nothing new here that we can teach you, right? But we may be able to educate incoming passengers, riders. And before this article even starts, right? I want a rider and passenger before they read this or listen to the video to understand this. We work for our tips, right? The company is taking 60 to 70% of those astronomic fees that you are paying, right? So it's no exaggeration that Uber, Lyft and other ride sharing companies have completely rewritten the rules of ground transportation. But what exactly are those rules? Ride sharing isn't like renting a car or even hailing a cab. It has its own peculiarities. The driver gets to rate you pitfalls like the vomit scam and surge pricing and perks. You could save money. Most of the ride sharing guides you would find online are written either for drivers, helping them make more money as a Lyft or Uber driver, or from a general passenger's perspective. The passenger guide goes deeper into the consumer dangers of ride sharing, drawing on more than a decade of ride sharing cases and their resolution. So inside this video inside this article and i want you to if you want to read up on anything the link is below what is ride sharing who should consider ride sharing who should not consider ride sharing how do i use ride sharing how do i hail a ride share by the way these are all standalone videos right ride share hailing strategies should i tip my driver answer is yes um, is ride sharing safe not that safe for both parties because the companies are failing us on safety, but we'll get there. Do Uber and Lyft drivers rate passengers? How do I see passenger ratings? What's a good passenger rating on Lyft and Uber? How to boost your passenger rating on Lyft or Uber? What is the vomit scam? How to avoid a vomit scam? What are the other major ride sharing scams? How to contact customer service at Lyft and Uber? So, A, what is ride sharing? Ride sharing allows you to arrange one-way transportation via a car or van through a mobile app. The two largest ride sharing companies are Uber and Lyft, but availability can depend on the destination. For example, in India, you may also use blah, blah car. And in South Africa, you could hail a ride through journey. Okay, cool. Who should consider ride sharing? A business or leisure traveler who needs to take a short trip? The average Uber ride is about five miles and the company has an eight hour time limit on trips. Anyone who doesn't mind working with a non-professional driver in exchange for a lower price than a cab or limousine. Um, so I take a little offense to this comment here with a non-professional driver. How are you going to call? How can this guy call a driver, non-professional driver, if you have 10, 15, 20,000 trips? A far better driver than this guy who's writing the article could ever be. Just, just reminding him, be careful how you address drivers. A traveler who wants additional ground transportation options as a backup to a cab or a limousine. Who should not consider ride sharing? Anyone who needs the quality and consistency of a taxi cab or a professional driver. I'm not saying that taxi cabs are... The, this guy's got this part of the article horribly wrong, Right? Because you can't say that a taxi cab driver is more superior to a rideshare driver. We, we work for our ratings, you know. Taxi drivers don't. I want to remind this guy. A traveler with special needs, young kids, oversized luggage, ride-sharing companies typically cater to adult travelers, right? With a limited amount of luggage. Not necessarily. If you order an SUV or an XL, you can. Again, wrong. Jeez, this is not, not a good reporter here. Um, obviously, also, who should not consider ride sharing? Anybody under 18, the most important part is left out. Kids, don't get in our car if you're a kid. Passengers who are inebriated that they might damage the vehicle by vomiting in it. That I agree. How do I use ride sharing? To use a ride sharing app, 
You first have to know your options. Start by setting up an account on Lyft or Uber. Um, how to set up an Uber, how to set up an account on Uber, download the Uber app on your phone, create an Uber account, fill out your first name, upload a picture, no scammy profile name, enter your payment information, right? Uber will send you an email to confirm how to set up an, a Lyft account, download the Lyft account, put your phone number in the app. Upload your name, your identity, your picture, etc. Same process. How do I hail a ride share? Calling for a ride share is easy on Uber. When you open the app, you'll get a prompt that says, where are you going to? Put in the final destination. Double check that final destination. Don't add a shitload of destinations to it. It just pisses us drivers off, right? Uber will then give you a list of options sorted by price. Uber Black, Uber Comfort, Uber XL, Uber X. Screw Uber sharing. We're not interested in it. If, you wanna, if you're cheap, if you want to share a, a ride with someone, don't, don't get an Uber. Ride sharing hailing strategies. Pay attention to the pickup location. It may be far away from your current location. Most ride sharing apps will let you spec specify your pickup location. Note the name and license plate of your driver. Muy importante. Very important. The app will give you that information. Sometimes taxis double as ride share cars. Since many taxis look the same, you'll need to take a note of the license plate. Otherwise, you could get in the wrong car. Look for a message from your driver. Sometimes drivers get confused too and they can't find you. Be aware that many rideshare drivers have minim minimal English proficiency. What are you trying to say? Google Translate is your best friend. No, don't call your ride too soon. Otherwise, you could end up paying for a fee for making the driver wait. Remember the universal sign of the ride share, the phone point. You know the taxi wave, an outstretched arm with a hand waving back and forth. The ride share equivalent is the phone point. Hold your phone near your chest and point it with your other hand. The ride share driver will immediately know that you are the passenger. Should I tip my driver? Yes! Yes! You're, no, you're under no obligation to leave a tip. I'm just telling you tip, period, right? What is surge pricing? Most of the time, the estimated fare you see on your rideshare app will be reasonable and significantly less than a taxi or a limousine. But from time to time, the algorithm loses its mind, definitely, and shows you an outrageously high price. Rideshare companies call that surge pricing. And it's easily explained. Prices go up when... More people want rides. The apps will sometimes warn you when surge prices are in effect. Um, you can save money by using Google Maps or Apple Maps to get directions. They will list your ride share options. Or you can try downloading an, an app like Obi, which compares ride share prices. Is ride sharing safe? Yes, usually. Uber's independently audited safety reports suggest a vast majority of trips are incident free. However, Uber has been sued for unsafe rides, including alleged sexual assaults. Very few, but just remember this, Ryder, we are vetted. We have a background check. You don't. So it's more likely you're going to get up to some nonsense in your car, in our cars, than us creating nonsense with you. Just, just FYI, right? You can check these stats. I'm going to leave the link below. Take a few precautions before you get into a rideshare vehicle. Confirm that you're in the right car. The app will display the driver's name and license number. Do Uber and Lyft drivers rate passengers? Yes, on Lyft and Uber, both drivers and passengers can rate each other on a scale of one to five stars. The ratings ensure the safety and comfort of everyone. We beg you to be honest. Don't retaliate if you're upset or angry. Don't ding the guy or girl with one star. Be really fair here as we are, right? The consequences are different. If a Driver gets too many one-star reviews, they'll get deplatformed. How do I see my passenger ratings? In the Lyft app, go to view account. View your rating, ride count, and time spent with Lyft. In the Uber app, in the settings, tap privacy and then privacy center. In the privacy center, swipe to the right and then click on would you like to see the summary of how to use Uber. Scroll down to the browse your data section and tap on view my ratings. View your rating. What's a good passenger rating on Lyft and Uber? Do not look to your rideshare app for validation. As long as you are a dry, as long as your driver rating does not fall below 4.5, you don't have to worry. You can't control the ratings you get from your drivers. For example, one driver 
gave me a one-star review after he saw my screen during the ride. I was sitting in the passenger seat and I opened up the Uber app. Uber displayed a large option to leave a tip for my driver. I clicked away since the ride was not over. The driver, apparently believing I had stiffed him, punished me with a one-star review. Oh well, how to boost your passenger rating on Lyft or Uber? Really, I thought I told you not to look for validation from these apps. This guy's pretty cocky as well. Mind your manners. Use your pleases and thank yous. Refrain from having loud conversations uh, and talking down to the driver. True. Don't slam the door. Muy importante. That really annoys your driver. No eating, drinking or smoking. If you mess up the car, you lose points. You will pay. Keep the conversation to a minimum. If your driver wants to engage in a conversation and if you do too, then go ahead, but stick to safe topics. Avoid politics, religion, and talk about the weather. True. If you think you're going to be sick, ask to pull over. Don't puke in our car. Your driver will be grateful that you did not vomit in the car. You might even get a few bonus points for not making a mess. What is a vomit scam? Ride shares are not safe from scams. One of the biggest one remains the vomit scam in which drivers charge for bogus damage to their cars. The most Common type of damage involves a passenger throwing up in a car, hence the name. Both Lyft and Uber allow a driver to charge anywhere from twenty dollars to a small uh, for small liquid spills to one hundred and fifty dollars for extensive liquid and smelly messes. Right? It works both ways, my friends. Right? We're not here to scam you. Right? Just make sure you don't puke in our car. There's no clear way to appeal a vomit scam charge. The companies just review the customers' disputes and then reiterate that the charges are valid. How to avoid a vomit scam. Take a before and after photo of your car. Making the vomit scam stick hinges on photographic evidence. Don't eat or drink in the car. The moment a driver hears the crinkle of cookies being unwrapped or, or smells fries or burgers, your odds of getting a vomit scam go up. Doesn't matter if you don't eat a single cookie. This, this guy really doesn't know the, the ride industry. Ask your driver to inspect the back seat. You can also ask your driver to take a look at the back seat to make sure everything is as you left it. It may seem unusual, but if the driver signs off, you'll have one more piece of evidence. Silly. What are the other major ride-sharing scams? Phantom rides. Sometimes ride-sharing companies charge you for trips you didn't take. That's what happened to TJ Kane when Uber charged her more than $200 for a ride taken on her account at 1 a.m. Missed connections. Remember my advice about checking the pickup location. If you're not sure, you could end up like Liz Bainan. She says her Uber driver didn't show up for a ride at the airport. The ride sharing company charged her anyway. You didn't pay enough. Here's a warning about paying for your side for your ride in cash. It doesn't always register with your ride sharing company. So when Diane Somerville paid cash and then found an extra $10 charge on a credit card from Uber, she complained to her bank. How to contact customer service at Lyft or Uber? Hopeless. Don't even try. We publish the names, numbers, and email addresses for the executives at Lyft and Uber on this site. A brief and polite email to one of the top executives may lead to a quick solution. I mean, that's the biggest load of shit I've heard read right there. We are just the intermediary like other companies in the ride-sharing economy, Lyft and Uber view themselves as intermediaries between you and the driver. They don't want to get involved in any dispute you may have with one of their drivers, and they go to great lengths to avoid any responsibility. Talk is cheap. If you want to talk to a real person at a ride-sharing company, good luck. True, Lyft and Uber would much prefer you talk to an elect electronic chatbot, robot. True. Or not having a conversation at all. We're too big to care. At the major ride-sharing companies, there's a pervasive attitude that they are simply too big to have to provide good customer service. If something goes doesn't go their way, they just threaten to ban a customer or a driver. If someone asks for a review of a case, they just say no. It's come to this. The disruptors are now ripe for disruption. New entrants like Alta Rideshare and other companies are already nipping at their heels. Strikes are being organized. Protests. By the way, Thanksgiving strike, November 23, 24, 25. Stand up. Drivers. Ride sharing is one of the biggest innovations of the 21st century, but it's not without danger and consumer problems. 
safety is still lax. Tell the rider and the passenger and the driver, safety is something these guys need to spend some money on. Using these strategies will help you have a safer ride. Um, Christopher Elliott is the founder of Elliott Advocacy, a nonprofit organization that empowers consumers to solve their problems and helps those who can't. We appreciate you, uh, Christopher Elliott. I do, however, have to say that a lot of the things that you've written in your article, you've got wrong. Sorry, just have to say it as it is, right? And I also want to say, if the passenger or the rider has a question for the drivers, put it underneath in the comments box. Get real answers from drivers, right? This gentleman is not a driver. He's, he's, he's going in as a rider writing the article and basing a couple of his, his uh, stories on other passengers' stories, right? So you decide. Why, why, don't, why don't the drivers and the riders, why don't the drivers and the riders comment below, right? Comment below and let us know if it is just... Or if the article makes sense and is well written. I'll let you decide. Christopher Elliott, thank you. Wanted to make a video on this. I appreciate what you do for consumers. Uh, his website is elliott.org. Leave your comments below. Thank you.